Hello class, please have a seat, settle down. I want to let you know first off that Jerome is no longer with us. Um, no, he didn't die. I had him kicked out of the class. Hello everyone, Sean B. Martin here. I was going to upload the editing of the intro to five things from last week as my next Professor Martin lesson, but I decided that I gotta squeeze one in here in between those two. So that will now become episode four. I had tweeted about it as episode three, but it's gonna be episode four. And I wanna cover some things about your audience that I really, I, I really wanna cover a little bit more theory, then we'll get into practical, and at the end of this, we'll get into a little bit of um, what I use for my video setup so that when I begin the fourth lesson, it's not gonna be completely overwhelming. Your homework for last time was to download the YouTube Creator Playbook, and I talked about calls to action. So hopefully you looked at that. It is on page 12 of the playbook. And some of the things I want to talk about are the things that seem to bother people about YouTubers, but they're the things that are essential to the success of that YouTuber. And that's bugging people to like, favorite, subscribe, and comment on your videos. Why is this important? It's important because how many likes, favorites, subscriptions, and comments you have is going to determine where you fall on search results. If you Google World Edit Tutorial, you get three results ranked. The first one has over 1,000 likes. The second one doesn't have ratings turned on for some reason, but the third one is mine. And the reason it's up there is because I asked for likes and I got them because it's an effective tutorial, it's listed on the wiki, and if you have that many likes, you get returned as a Google search result. That's very important. And it really seems to bother some people when YouTubers are asking for likes, favorites, comments, subscriptions, but it really is our bread and butter. We need it in order to continue to create and get a larger audience. It's part of the motivation of the system. Have I given you enough time to get to page 12? I hope so, because I'm moving on. Subscriptions. Subscriptions are very important because that's how people get hand-delivered your content. That is the easiest way for you to get more views if it's just sitting there in their subscription box. And you have to give them a reason to subscribe. You have to say like, new content every week or whatever, and you have to follow through. You have to promise and you have to deliver, very important. And finally, uh, the statistics have shown that asking, verbally asking like, hey, would you, would you mind subscribing, press the button? is more effective than just putting the text on the screen. Normally I just put the text on the screen, but every so often I, I remind people like, hey, if you like what you see, but I'm at a point where I don't really need to ask for it as much. Many of you are not at that point yet. Comments are very important to the ranking of search results. So the more comments you have, even if they are things that are just like first, second, third, what's the IP, whatever, that's going to improve how visible you are. And if you're having problems getting comments, you can do something like say, I don't know, ask people to write cookie on your videos, or you can do something that will make them want to answer, as in give them a question like, would you rather blah or blah? And very often I will just throw out random questions as I'm making a video because I know that certain people will probably answer at least one of them. And I am interested in the answer, but it's also going to help my comments and my rankings, blah, blah, blah. So as a viewer, subscribing is gonna get you more content from that person that you liked a video from. Um, commenting could possibly give you a little interaction with that person. I try and interact with my fans as much as I can. Liking and favoriting doesn't do anything for you. Basically, the author asking for a like or favorite is asking for you to do something that does absolutely nothing for you except make you feel good about supporting someone. And it's very important to support the people that you like because they might not be able to make videos if you don't support their content. So work on your calls to action. Try to be nice, try to be respectful and polite. Ask someone to take a little bit of effort and their time to help support you and most likely they will. I'm going to move away from the playbook now so you can put it away if you want. There are a couple things that I want you to understand about the audience that I've come to learn over my year on YouTube. Your audience is fickle, and the larger it gets, the more unwieldy it gets. Your audience is not one person with one mind. When you ask them what they want, you're asking dozens, hundreds, thousands of people what they want. They're not all going to agree. So you have to be understanding when not every one of your subscribers watches every one of your videos. And trust me, that will never happen. You have to understand that not everyone is going to watch all your videos. So people are going to miss things and not understand details, especially if you have ongoing series. 
The reason that I have so many different types of videos, I have live action comedy, I have the informational thing, I have Minecraft, I have other video games, I have drum covers, I have vlogs. The reason I have all these different types of videos is because there are all kinds of different people that are each going to enjoy certain types in their own way, and they're not gonna like everything. And your audience won't like everything. So treating them as if they have to respond to you, they have to like you, they have to watch everything, is kind of condescending and weird and you shouldn't do it. This is turning into Professor Martin's etiquette school. I use Adobe Premiere Pro CS4 to edit, and it operates quite differently when I'm using live action versus when I'm using video game footage, and I know many of you are curious about using video game footage, so I'm gonna show you what I do. In the program, when you make a new sequence, you need to make sure that the sequence fits your video file. Hopefully you're recording at 720, I'll show you that in a second. And you can pretty much choose any project that matches the correct specifications, for instance, under XD Cam X, we have a 30 frames a second, 720p. Make sure that the square pixels are on. If they're not square pixels, you're gonna end up with that weird aspect ratio going on. And uh, this would be a perfect setting for a uh, Minecraft video, for instance. When I export, I use the Windows Media Video Format. I don't know what any pros or cons of it may be. I understand that other formats that work well for YouTube are MP4, which I cannot do on here, um, H.264, which I really don't know anything about, but I've been told that that works fine. And um, the settings that I use for Windows Media Player are I jack these up almost the entire way. I, I don't really know what that means, but it works. And I lower the keyframe interval to something as low as two usually. That's how, how many frames will go by, be, how many seconds will go by before the entire frame is refreshed again. The lower that is, the sharper your video should be. I use Fraps to capture all my video game video. You should buy it. You should not use the pirated version. I've seen what it does to people's videos. There's a lot of lag, uh, audio video lag, and other issues, you should buy it. It's $39, I couldn't recommend it more highly. And I also, I use a freeware program called Sizer. I will include a link in the info. A fan found it for me. I will also give them credit because I don't remember who it was at this moment. I'm sorry, but it'll be in the info. Um, it does a very nifty trick that is very important for something like Minecraft, which you cannot automatically open in a sized window for some reason. Sizer does this awesome thing where I can right click on this corner and now I'm in 1280 by 720, which is not actually 1280 by 720. I'll show you. Sizer, I don't know, for some reason, when I put in 1280 by 720, it doesn't work. It's too small. So I added what the difference was from how small it was, and I got 1296 by 758, and that produces videos that are 1280 by 720. If yours works on just by typing 1280 by 720, then good. <laughs> I don't know why mine doesn't work that way, but uh, that's what I had to do for mine. Maybe you'll have to do that for yours, too. And that's it for today's lesson, guys. We already went longer than I wanted to. We got to straighten up because there's another teacher coming in to use this room next. And I don't want it to look like shit. Next time I will show you how I edited the intro to last week's five things. I will show you the whole thing. And it's going to be in 1080 so that you can actually see my entire desktop in crystal clear quality. It looks very nice. I think it turned out well. Please like this video. It will mean a lot to me and it will really help other people find it who are also trying to succeed on YouTube. And I don't want to stop anyone. Class dismissed.